evening we do not have a quorum so what does that mean is that we'll actually be taking formal action on the items on this agenda at the full city council uh, meeting later tonight what we will do in the meantime though is hear any public comment we have three speakers this evening on the items um, that they would like uh, that were on the agenda but the action will be taken later tonight so we have three speakers uh, dr tony bark hi i'm here um in regards to the spraying of Roundup on all public property in Evanston. And um, it has come to my attention. I saw it a few years ago, spoke with the mayor at the time. I thought we had a moratorium. And then later this, earlier this spring, um, I saw somebody spraying, a city worker, spraying Roundup at the beach on the grassy areas in the back by the sailing beach and um, called the mayor. She was gonna investigate, I didn't hear back. And then about three weeks ago, there was another city worker spraying Roundup in the park early in the morning uh, by the tennis courts at Dempster Street. And at that point, I called the mayor back, and I spoke with the head of the environmental board, and I also spoke with a head of, I think we now call it the Green Works Department. And it, came, it became very clear to me that no one in the city really understands what they're spraying, nor do they understand the MSDS, the safety data information, or the OSHA standards, um, and the requirements to post to the public. I spoke with Deborah Shore, water commissioner, tonight. She's, of course, in favor of stopping the use of Roundup for many reasons, as I am, the same reasons. The, the um, Water Reclamation Department has a policy of not using synthetic uh, herbicides on any of their properties for the same reasons I'd like to see them stopped. In addition to an MD, I have a master's in medical science and disaster management and a lead accreditation, which is a leadership in environmental design. Um, I made a, a documentary two years ago on healthcare, and a lot of it was the use of Roundup on our crops and in our food. Um, but the one thing I want to leave you all with, because I don't need to go into all the science tonight, that's not the, you know, I'm here to say that we need to stop it, and I'm happy to come back and actually give a full-on hour or two-hour lecture on why we need to stop it. But it has been sold to us as safe for humans, because what it does, it works on the EPSP um, enzyme pathway, which is the shikimate pathway. And it's true that mammals don't use that pathway, but what is what people aren't thinking about is that every bacteria that we need in our body use that pathway, which means all our vitamins, all our neurotransmitters, um, our bone production, our thyroid function, um, our mental health uh, rely on these on this microbiome. And Roundup is an antibiotic. That is what it is. It kills everything in its path except mammals. And I have point blank asked entomologists, I have scientists, friends who just were at the EPA and gave congressional testimony three weeks ago, asked the EPA point blank if they had any, any safety studies on humans and animals, and the answer was no. And we've been spraying it on a weekly basis in Evanston. So I am really begging you all to look farther, further into this and take it into consideration. In my film, I show that it is associated with an exponential rise of Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, liver cancer, breast cancer, and many other diseases. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Next is uh, Shava Wu. Good evening, my name is Shava Wu. I'm president of the Women's Club of Evanston, and I'm here on behalf of our board of directors. The Women's Club of Evanston opposes the proposed ordinance 86016 pertaining to the sale of the city lot located at 1714, 1720 Chicago Avenue. We oppose the suspension of I'm the sorry, one oh, moment. Dr. Bark? Oh. Sorry, I should have been more clear. We're, we're probably going to discuss what you brought up a second ago for discussion. We won't take action on it, so you might want to stick around for a quick moment. Okay, I will. I'm just, he's just giving me a Okay, great. Just wanted to make sure we're leaving. My apologies for interrupting. No, no sorry. problem. No. Um, we oppose the suspension of the rules pertaining to the two-stage approval process for negotiation and sale of a property. The WC is concerned for a number of reasons, and we have five that we'd like to point out tonight. The first is traffic congestion. The second is parking for the community, library patrons, downtown shoppers, 
our members and guests. The third is the physical sustainability of our clubhouse. Fourth is the historic significance of our block and of our neighbors. And last, the viability and our ability to continue to support the community. This is an issue not just for the Women's Club and our neighbors, but for the entire community. We're asking an environmental impact study be conducted to include traffic study, congestion, parking needs, the impact on the physical historical buildings, and that this be considered in conjunction with the needs and desires of the community. Traffic congestion is a serious issue for drivers, cyclists, and pedestrians. Just a few years ago, a beloved librarian was killed on Church Street, and recently we had an accident right at our doorsteps. The loss of 74 parking spaces and the recharging stations must also be addressed. The library, Francis Willard House, and our downtown businesses and club rely on these places and the community to park and enjoy downtown. When considering a possible development, we must consider the impact on our physical buildings. What can our old historic buildings really withstand? Our building's 104 years old. What can our structures really physically handle? The historic significance of our block, the actual building tenants, and the mission of our organizations should not be overlooked. The legacy of our historic block, the leaders of Evanston and the nation, should be remembered and honored here. And lastly, the impact on our building and our organization's ability to serve and give back to the community will be negatively impacted by development during the construction and possibly afterwards. The Women's Club opens our doors to numerous community events and private events. We're able to fundraise for the community and be gener generous donors while supporting countless community organizations. In the past three years, the club has raised well over half a million dollars that's been reinvested in our community in different not-for-profit organizations. Construction and development will negatively impact the events we can host and our ability to support those in our community with the most needs. If the city moves forward, the WC and community must be included in the planning. We need time to review the proposals and understand the consequences. We thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. Lori McFarlane. Hello, I'd like to talk about the Ryan Field parking lot renovation and the alley that is immediately west of the parking lot. Uh, the paving of that alley will be discussed potentially tonight here and in city council. The neighbors who live along the alley have a proposal that modifies the city staff's position slightly. The city presented a budget for a two-lane alley. The neighbors would like a one-lane alley. I understand that the city staff believes that that will cost significantly less and that would represent a savings to the city if we were to go forward with alley paving in that Northwestern has already committed to pay at least $400,000 toward the cost of the alley. So the difference would be significantly less and would represent an opportunity at this time. In addition, I'd like to um, emphasize that the neighbor's proposal was something that was a was reached through a collaborative process. If there's any question about that, but all of the neighbors along the alley have been contacted, all those that we could reach um, via email, which is, I would say, the huge majority of them. Um, we've been working with those neighbors for quite some time. So all of those voices are presented in the neighborhood proposal, and we ask that you consider it seriously tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Is there an, anyone else wanting to speak on any matter before the committee? Okay. Uh, Assistant City Manager uh, Marty Lyons, regarding uh, this is regarding the pesticides. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. While we had a presentation tonight, uh, given that a we have a, a lack of quorum, uh, and also given the uh, um, previous speakers, staff would like to defer the presentation until the 25th, taking into account what we've heard tonight, and uh, um, including that as appropriate in the 25th, and uh, also that that presentation then uh, we will discuss whether or not that's going to the whole council, given the um, the. Uh, uh, what we've heard tonight from residents. Alderman Rainey. I, I really um, object to that. I think it should, the presentation should be tonight. How long is it? I, I don't think it should be now. I think it should be when the council starts since we're not going to have this meeting. I, I'm sorry, Alderman Rainey. So when would you like the presentation? Tonight. Tonight, once the council starts, at the beginning of the council meeting. All right. How is it like an yeah. hour long or... 10 minutes? No, because it would have been part of the A&PW, and those are never more than 15 minutes. The pres I'm talking about the presentation. As am I, yes. 15 minutes. 
I, well, maybe you could cut it a little short because there are people interested in that. And the longer we wait, the more pesticides get sprayed. Uh, Mr. Chair, Alderman Rainey, um, our only concern is just the, the length of the agenda for the full council. You're going to have to take the there will be an extended discussion of the items that are not discussed at this committee. So whatever, I mean, whatever you'd like to recommend to the full council, I guess ultimately they could decide given the, the agenda before them. Um, Mr. D'Agostino is here and will be happy to stay, I would imagine. So if that works out for the full council, great. Our concern, there's a lengthy executive session uh, scheduled for the conclusion of the council meeting this evening. We're just trying to be sensitive to time. We're hard working well paid we can wait we can stay late <laughs> and i think mr chair when the, the matter of the committee's business come before the full council if the council would like to do it, we'll be prepared to do it thank you if the council can't show up on time then the council has to stay later that's my theory we'll, we'll consider it at the time of the, the full council meeting so the next meeting and we can't officially adjourn either, the next meeting of this body or the the planning and development committee will be at 6 45 p.m tonight and then following that again any matters on this agenda for the administration public works agenda will be on heard and considered taken action upon at the full council meeting following that meeting if there's anyone quite has any questions please stop me in the hallway thank you everyone could you ask maybe people didn't realize but if there are people here for liquor ordinance issues um, do you think you could invite them to speak if they care to if they don't want to some of them didn't plan on staying since it's only for introduction if there's anyone that would like to speak on any issue at the, the council meeting please stop me I'll, I'll stick around in the hallway for a couple of minutes afterwards and we can figure out who's who's here to speak on that you're saying right now I asked any if there's anyone that wanted to speak on anything else and no one said anything so is there anyone else that wants to speak on any matter before the council we have a nice 20 minutes to fill so no, I'm kidding so the next meeting will be the 645 planning and development committee of the council thank you